Sprinkles if you got them. Jack's Donuts, find a location near you, now. This is the Frells family's land. When the sun comes out, the kids run and play right there. This used to be a shed. Now, it's where they get breakfast. This is more than just land. It's home. The Frells family runs with us on a John Deere 1 series tractor. This land isn't the only thing that should live on for generations. Nothing runs like a deer. Search John Deere 1 series for more. Visit Reynolds Farm Equipment, your hometown John Deere dealer today at ReynoldsFarmEquipment.com. You're good at making big announcements. We're good at your insurance. Start with Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance, online, over the phone, or in person, and stop knocking on wood. From warehousing to transportation and everything in between, Piper Logistics does it all. Centrally located, Piper Logistics has two warehouses in Indianapolis and a warehouse in Cincinnati, Ohio. Piper Logistics houses over 1 million square feet. Along with our transportation department, we can provide service to half the United States markets. Craving comfort fresh food made from scratch daily? Check out Aspen Creek Grill. Located across from Hamilton Town Center and beside the Holiday Inn, we offer family farm raised premium black Agnes steaks hand cut daily, creamy pastas, salmon chicken, and fall off the bone ribs. Start with our famous powwow shrimp appetizer and don't miss our refreshing drinks. Family friendly or a great night out with friends? Aspen Creek Grill. Aspen Creek Grill, Noblesville. Call 317 559 3300. Bertner Electric Incorporated has been proudly serving our residential and commercial customers with quality electrical repair for over 33 years. We are fully licensed and insured in electrical wiring and electrician service packages. You'll receive a competitive assessment, whether you're a homeowner or a business owner, first time or long time customer. We offer free estimates for any new project. Call our licensed and experienced electricians today. wanted was to feel loved. He said he loved me. My friends told me it wasn't a big deal. They thought he was so cool, but they didn't know what he wanted me to do. All I ever wanted was to feel loved. You have no idea the kind of pressure I felt to take things to the next level. Things were moving so fast. I was basically the only person in the freshman class who hadn't done it yet. So, we did. I loved him. I thought she loved me. My health class had CPR at school. I stayed after class to talk with the instructor about it. They showed me that it didn't have to be that way. They showed me that I get to make my own choices. There is another way. That's the best thing CPR gives you. Another way. A better way. A healthy way. Sometimes you don't see it because you're in your own world, but they don't make you feel bad. They talk to you like a real person, and they save kids from really unhealthy decisions. They tell the truth, and they know what they're talking about. So yeah, my life was different. I started to choose the better way. I honestly don't know where I'd be or what I'd be doing had it not been for CPR.
You want a career that creates experiences that are impossible to forget. By studying sports and events at IUPUI, you'll get hands-on experience in and out of the classroom. And with India as your classroom, there are high-profile events, sports franchises, hotels, museums, and large organizations across the city to engage, educate, and enlighten your student journey before you graduate. There isn't a better city than Indianapolis to get the experience you need to prepare you to handle any event, big or small. It all starts here. High school sports fans, welcome back to Game Time. To pure spirits. To pure sports. Welcome back to high school sports. Fans, I'm IHSA Commissioner Paul Knighty, and I just want to say, welcome back. This is game time. This is Indiana high school sports. This is your IHSAA. You want a career that will transform your life while you change the lives of others by helping them live well. With a health or exercise sciences degree from IUPUI School of Health and Human Sciences, you will gain an in-depth understanding of the healthcare industry while preparing you for a variety of graduate and professional programs in health. And with Indy as your classroom, you will have clinical options within leading hospitals right in our backyard, as well as a degree from Indiana University, reputable leaders in the healthcare industry. It all starts here. Can't get to a computer? Then we've got you covered. Just go to the Indiana SRN app and stay up to date with all of your favorite teams. You can watch live coverage or relive the experience with our on-demand service. After the Marine Corps, I was diagnosed with PTSD and became homeless for 15 years. Like a hermit living on the street, I just existed. I came to Wheeler Mission. Wheeler operates on a culture of kindness. Going through their programs reminded me that my meaning in life is to serve God. God set me free from anxiety and depression. Before Wheeler, I just existed, but today I live. Sprinkles if you got them. Jack's Donuts, find a location near you, now. Hey conductor, how about something new? You played this last year. Come on, get your head out of your sacks. Shh, we're trying to hear. Well, I'm sick and tired of hearing your kid play the wrong notes. Where's my kid solo? At least you can see your kid. Why is my kid so way in the back? The conductor only plays his favorite. Woo! I get her! Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Bishop Chatard High School as we bring you Circle City Conference Volleyball on this Tuesday night. It'll be the Warriors of Covenant Christian coming in at 4-12 and overall, 0-3 in conference play. The Trojans of Bishop Chatard at 5-7 and overall. They are currently 1-1 one one in the conference. Tonight's game brought to you in part by the Morales Group, building better futures one story at a time. By Burtner Electric serving Greater Indianapolis and the surrounding counties. IU Sports Management, begin your journey today. Piper Logistics, from warehousing to transportation, we do it all. And by Reynolds Farm Equipment, serving our customers and community 
since 1955. Great to have you with us, Troy Derangowski, along with Eric Eaton. A conference matchup here tonight. I know both teams have sub-500 records, but when you get two teams together like this, basically anything can happen. Yeah, it's a big conference matchup here tonight, as you said, Troy. And for Bishop Sutar, try and get back to the 500 mark on the season and try and stay in the in the conference championship race as well because they have Ron Colley on Thursday night. Yeah. And Ron Colley's undefeated, so if you got to win the night, keep yourself in position with just one loss so far on the season. You know, we had a Circle City game last night that ended up going into that third set, and the first two sets were close, but then in the third set, it was all over. Heritage Christian dominated that. When you look at these two teams tonight, we'll start first off with the Covenant Christian. What might be their strength going into this one? Well, their, their strength, Troy, is going to be uh, Danny Newport. She's an outside, outstanding hitter, leads them in kills on the year with 384. And also, Evie Dart has had 196 kills on the year, an, out, an outstanding middle blocker as well, leads the team in, with 58 blocks on the season. So those are going to be their two uh, players that they're going to keep that they'll they'll look to early on offense and then off on defense there in Evie Dart. But they, I think for Covenant Christian, they're, they're trying to find themselves a little bit here, Troy, in terms of trying to be able to to, to pick up wins. Uh, they went one and three in the Harrison Invitational this last weekend, and all of those matches they were in, they just couldn't find the you know, be able to make the key play at the right time to win those matches. Yeah. So that's going to be what the, I think they're looking for tonight with Coach Merlina Stroud. Who's going to step up, make the, the big play at the right time? And by the way, when they won that one matchup against Mooresville, they did snap a five-game losing streak, so I know getting back on the winning side of things will be big. You'd already mentioned about how you got to play well. Their next matchup will be against Ben Davis coming up tomorrow night. Yeah, that'll be a big rivalry matchup, too. Yeah, it certainly will be. Now, you're seeing Chittard warming up right now. We had them against Cathedral, and they really didn't serve very well at all. In fact, coming into this one here tonight, their serve percentage is now down to 86.3. They've got some weapons, but they, like Kevin and Christian, really just haven't put things together consistently so far. Yeah, I mean, obviously when you're 6-7, and seven, you've been up and down as well on the season, 1-1 one and one, as we said in the conference. Uh, but they, you know, this is senior night here for them tonight here at Chittard. They honored five seniors in a pre-match uh, ceremony. So uh, I think they're going to come out inspired to uh, win this match for their seniors tonight, I would think. Yeah, and they got some weapons to talk about some of the key matchups we'll see tonight for the Trojans. Yeah, in terms of hitting for, for Bishop Chittard, Led by, by Madeline Lunsford on in kills, 115 on the season. Grace Feltz second in kills with 29. Uh, uh, actually, 80 kills for Myra Lockett it leads them in kills. And then Lauren Shanks second with 75 kills on the season. Those are the two keys that they're going to look to in terms of offense uh, on, on the season uh, coming into this match. It is so important. You've done enough volleyball to know that if you can get off to a good start, especially when you're at home and put that other team in a deep hole, you can really slide the pressure right back on them. How important is it tonight for Covenant to really stay in this early? Well, that's exactly right, Troy. It, they, need to, they need to get off to a fast start, I think, Covenant. When they come in at 4-12 and 12 on the season, they do have some experience coming back, though, from a team that was very, very good last year. I think they went 25-7, and seven, made it all the way to the, uh, to the regional final before they lost to Western Boone, who was a state runner-up in 2A. So... Uh, they have some experience, and they know what it takes to, to hang in these matches, so they're going to lead, uh, lead in, uh, key in on their seniors tonight and hope to keep them in this match early. You know, I mentioned already about Chittard and their inability to be successful consistently in the serve department. How does Covenant take advantage of that here tonight as well? Well, for, for Covenant, how they... Uh, you know, that's going to be, if, if Bishop Chittard struggles with serving, that's going to be a big key for Covenant Christian to stay in the match but, because if Covenant's going to commit service a, service errors here tonight, that's going to be free points for Covenant Christian. So, But they've got to still be ready for the service to, tonight and expect that Covenant, that, that Bishop is going to be a, a fine serving team because you, you don't want to get caught off guard. Yeah. You've got to be ready for, and serve reception is always a big key in volleyball matches. So they still got to be key in on that and, and, and play their best volleyball and serve reception. You know, last night we saw some mistakes that were really self-inflicted, especially Garen Catholic in that final set in which they really didn't play well at all. They didn't respond the way we thought they would. So you're thinking about tonight, I mean, you're really going to have to be sharp no matter how many sets this goes. you got to play good volleyball and play smart volleyball all night long. Oh, absolutely, as we just talked about. I mean, the, really to me, the, the, the two keys when it always comes down to is serve and serve reception and setting. 
can you get the ball to the setter off the serve and that and allow your offense to be set up that way. Yeah, and that first hit so important, isn't it? Absolutely. you got to get it cleanly to the setter and so she can get it to one of her hitters to, to set up a clean kill. Well, again, we're looking for a covenant. If they win tonight, they get a win in conference play for Bishop Shatar. They're looking to go over the 500 mark in conference play here this evening, fresh off that loss to Cathedral. And again, they only served 86% in that matchup against the Fighting Irish on the other side. Covenant Christian looking for that first win in conference play. We'll come back at another way coming up next. This is High School Volleyball in India on SRN. From warehousing to transportation and everything in between, Piper Logistics does it all. Centrally located, Piper Logistics has two warehouses in Indianapolis and a warehouse in Cincinnati, Ohio. Piper Logistics houses over 1 million square feet. Along with our transportation department, we can provide service to half the United States markets. We encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Indiana SRN. Hit the bell to get notifications for upcoming games and more. Watch as many games as you want, as many times as you want. You want a career that creates experiences that are impossible to forget. By studying sports and events at IUPUI, you'll get hands-on experience in and out of the classroom. And with Indy as your classroom, there are high-profile events, sports franchises, hotels, museums, and large organizations across the city to engage, educate, and enlighten your student journey before you graduate. There isn't a better city than Indianapolis to get the experience you need to prepare you to handle any event, big or small. It all starts here. This is the Frells family's land. When the sun comes out, the kids run and play right there. This used to be a shed. Now, it's where they get breakfast. This is more than just land. It's home. The Frells family runs with us on a John Deere 1 Series tractor. This land isn't the only thing that should live on for generations. Nothing runs like a deer. Search John Deere 1 Series for more. Visit Reynolds Farm Equipment, your hometown John Deere dealer today at ReynoldsFarmEquipment.com. At Morales Group Staffing, we are all about building better futures. And during these times, we are working hard to put people to work. We are now hiring for hundreds of jobs with pay up to $17 an hour. Visit our website at moralesgroup.net or text JOBS, J-O-B-S, to 317-472-7600 to apply now and get hired today. We encourage you to follow us on Twitter at Indiana SRN. Find upcoming games, video highlights, and much more. Follow us now at Indiana SRN. We're back here at Chittard High School. I want to remind you this broadcast is copyrighted by Indiana SRN and the Indiana High School Athletic Association for the private use of our audience, the use of pictures, videos, and audio without the expressed written permission of the IHSAA is prohibited. Covenant will be on the right. The home team, Chittard, will be on the left. The numbers will be a little bit hard to pick out at times for Covenant tonight because they're dark on dark, and with my old eyes, it'll be up to Eric Eaton to figure it out <laughs> eventually anyway because he's keeping the stats and I'm not. So that's why you get paid a little higher salary than I do. So. You didn't know that, uh, did you? No, I did not. I'll do my best, though. <laughs> <laughs> and plus, since I'm on the left and you're on the right, maybe you can see that a little bit better. So we're moments away from getting this one started here this evening. We had a three-setter last night. Had Heritage Christian and Garen Catholic. It was close in the first two sets. I believe it was 25-20, 25-21. But then that third set, it was all Heritage. I think he ended up winning like 25-9 when it was all said and done. Yeah, a couple keys here, Troy, I think for uh, for Bishop Chittard is we want to put some pressure on Covenant. We talked a little bit earlier with it serve, get some free points off of service aces. And for Covenant Christian, I think they wouldn't try and establish a block early in this match. Evie Dart with 37 blocks on the season leads the team in blocking. All right. So the first serve of the night and Covenant Gets things started here in this Circle City matchup with the left hand. That'll be Lexi Thatcher catching Covenant a little bit off guard in that front row. Yeah, the setter there for Chittard, the little dink kill over the net. 
first point of the match. I think they should outlaw the dink. I mean, that's not <laughs> fair. You're, you're anticipating something big, Eric, and they dink it. And there's an ace. Wow. So that, by the way, is Lexi Thatcher. Kind of right on cue there. We said that perhaps they wanted to maybe get some free points off their serves, and they do right away. Boy, as a head coach, you see Thatcher again. When you're receiving and you make a mistake like that, because it almost looked like it was a receivable serve for sure, but you can't make those mistakes. Now, and Shatar with a mistake here, a hitting mistake here. They hit the antenna with the attack, and that's going to be a point for Covenant. So it will be Covenant serving minus one. In the lineup here for Covenant will be Tucker. She is a defensive specialist for the Warriors. Ball placed right at the net, and that's always so dangerous when you do that as you see Covenant able to tie this one up at two. Yeah, Evie Dart with the kill there in the middle for Covenant Christian. That set was set very tight to the net, or the pass was set to very tight to the net. Thatcher could not get to it, and then it led to an Evie Dart easy put away. So after falling down by two, good block up front. Trojans uh, free ball, and that was a really bad hit that time by Lockett right into the net. And if you're going to give a freebie, at least get it over so you have a chance to adjust and maybe get the ball back. Second attack error on the Trojans here early in this match. So Covenant three unanswered. Back set on the slide to the right to Lockett. See what the Warriors have in store. A little left hand tap once again. And then wide on the sweep with a right hand by Grace Feltz. And Covenant now with four straight. And three of their four points off of attack errors by the Shatard Trojans. So we thought it was a good start for Shatard, but now they need to get things rolling again. Middle set, and that'll do it right there. And that'll be Grace Feltz. A nice kill there, a nice set there from Thatcher as well. To set up Feltz, came in with 36 kills on the season. That's her 37th. Good look there at the replay as Lockett will serve. To the outside of the attack line. Nice block up front by Feltz once again. That ball was tipped by Feltz, but it falls in for the point for Covenant. Danny Newport with that kill there. Stayed with it. She was blocked on the initial opportunity. They went right back to her again. She put it away on the second opportunity. Here's a replay. Leading attacker on the year for Covenant is Danny Newport. She came into this match with 165 kills. So side out Warriors plus two, and that'll be our first service error of the night. So back to Bishop Chittard. This will be number 11, Grace Feltz. 18 blocks on the season. But again, it's been the serving that has hurt Shatard so much this year, but so far perfect here tonight. Trojans, short set middle, nothing there. Back to the outside and the block, but it falls in for the point. Off the block there that time for Newport. Her second kill of this match for Covenant. Olmstead, Shelby Olmstead will come in now for Covenant. Side out Warriors plus two in this opening set. Soft touch on the return, play at the net, and that was Lunsford able to get the point there for the Trojans. Yeah, joust play there at the net, two players converge at the same time, and the joust won by Lunsford, as you said, Troy, for the kill. So Bishop Shatar down by one. Side out here for Riley Kramer. You got another look at it right there. Shatard built the, well, I shouldn't say built, really started this one two to nothing, but then Covenant came back with a four straight. We've gone back and forth since that time. Here are the Trojans in the middle, and the ball kept alive at the net. Nice play for the Warriors. From inside the attack line, that was Shanks. Quick return. And that wasn't a very well played ball until the very end when you saw Newport able to get it across. And she's starting to get going a little bit now. Three kills for her, but what really set that up, Troy, was there was an overpass by Covenant, and Shatard could not put it away. And they made it, Covenant made a nice dig, and then they were able to get up, get the kill with Newport. Warriors lead it by two. 
Trojans slide to the right on the back set and unable to make the return. Point will go to Chittard. Lunsford with that kill, and it was set up off of a nice back set there by the setter, Lexi Thatcher. Tristan Morris out of the lineup. Back in will be Amira Lockett. Lockett will be on that front row, and the serve is going to be long, and that'll be the first service error of the night for Bishop Chittard. And four total errors for the Chittard Trojans. Covenants up by two. You know, you see teams, Eric, that, that do struggle, and both these teams are struggling a little bit this year, but, boy, you look at the really good teams. Somehow that point will go across there for Lockett. When you see teams struggle, you see them make those mistakes. And what we saw Chittard making some of those mistakes early in this one, it just some things you can't do. you got to really clean things up here relatively soon as there's an ace on the other end. And they're starting to roll here a little bit now. There's a libero player for them with a nice ace. Is it going to be Quinn Johnson? Okay. Quinn Johnson, libero player. Yeah. Quinn Johnson wearing number 18 and a receiving air at the other end. And all of a sudden now Chittard. A couple of points in a row. And now they take a 9-8 lead. And that'll be the second service error on Chittard. That was Quinn Johnson. Coming in now for Covenant will be Hallie Tyndall. And this will be Kay Jellen, 262 assists coming into this matchup here tonight. But we're tied at nine apiece. As you mentioned, another joust at the net, but this time won by the Trojans. That was Thatcher. Yeah, smart play by Thatcher there. I recognize that that ball was really too tight to the net to be able to set it, so she just put it away. So if you are receiving, Eric, do you want – would you be more comfortable as a player where it comes deep, or do you want it played at the net? What would make you more nervous as a player receiving? Uh, receiving a serve, I, I – I think I would be more nervous if it comes short. Okay, yeah. Uh, you know, because as a back row player, that's your job. You're ready for that. Right. Serve. Well, and the reason I ask you that because it does seem when it's a short serve, they really seem to be nervous about that, right? At least it feels that way to me. Yeah, there's a lot less room, obviously, to get it to the setter too. Misplayed there at the net by Lockett. She tried to reach out with that left hand, and the point will go to Covenant. So we have had a close contest here. I think the most we've had is a three-point lead either way. And we talked about Covenant needing to get off to a good start in this match, and I think they have so far. And that will be a service error the other way. That one out of bounds. Rarely do you see a serve go out of bounds right or left. It's usually deep. So back to a two-point lead. This will be Lockett serving. Outside, not a great set that time. Shatard back the other way, and this time number 12, Lauren Shanks. A big time kill for Shanks over on that left side. And we talked about Covenant maybe needing to establish a block presence in this match, with, particularly with Evie Dart, and so far they have not been able to do so. So the lead at three. Back set, and the tip right where... No Trojan player was available. Quinn Johnson, the closest. Evie Dart there with that kill, her second. She's going to go back to serve now. Here's a replay of this on a, off a back set, a little tip kill. Yeah, Johnson playing a few feet behind the two players on the front row. Middle set, and that'll be wide. Feltz knew it from the time she hit it. She saw she had the left side wide open on the angle, but rushed it a little bit. So back to one, side out, Covenant. This one hit to the middle, and that'll be a freebie here for Chittard. That one set again very close to the net. Good block up front, able to keep it alive is Feltz. Little tapper right there, and the middle was open, and the point will go to the Trojans. 
Another dink kill for the Shatar Trojans. I believe that was number three, Sarah McGillicuddy on that one. McGillicuddy, with, there she is right there, yeah. Almost had that appearance. She was going to go up and smoke it pretty good, but on the defensive side, got to be ready for anything. Lead back to two. To the outside left, big time hit. Shanks once again, her kill percentage is above 37. And Shanks coming with some power here in her last two kills for the Trojans. You know, something you said a little bit ago for Covenant is they do need some block presence there, and there just really is nothing so far. We're going to have to find a way to fix that. Up to three now, and that's going to be just inside the line. Big play there for the Warriors. In the front line there. That may have been, I, I think it was Ainsley uh, Gross on that kill. Yeah, I believe it was number two, the outside hitter, able to get to the inside. There's another look at it. And that'll be a service error for Kevin to Christian, number three. Back in the lineup will be Riley Kramer now for Shatar. And side out here for Kramer. Kevin still trying to get that first conference win here tonight. Warriors back on the attack. The back set to the right and unable to keep it alive. Good effort there by the Trojans. It really was good hustle by the Chittard Trojans, but then in the end, the kill's going to go to Newport of Covenant, her third of the match. So now the lead down to two here for the Trojans in this opening set. Side out once again for Covenant Christian. On this senior night, little sweep of the right hand, and that's Lunsford. Third kill of this opening set for Lunsford as Chittard builds a three-point lead. Well, they're methodically keeping that three-point lead. There you take a look at it again, just a sweep of the right hand. Good serve to the back middle. Almost a collision on that back line. Outside left, lock it. And we've got a whistle, and that's going to go against Kevin and Christian. That'll be a net violation, so the point will go to Bishop Chittard. Four-point lead, we'll see. How long the Coach Stroud elects to go here for Covenant without calling a timeout here. Shanks on the serve, and there it was again. Boy, I tell you what, I don't care how many games I've seen, when you do that, it generally ends up bad for you. Yeah, overpasses are not a good thing in volleyball. Uh, those, those hitters see uh, their eyes light up big time on those overpasses. No doubt about it. 1914, this is high school volleyball in Indiana SRN. Following the timeout, Chittard with the biggest lead here in the opening set of five. Serving again, Lauren Shanks, and that one clips the net, the Keith Meyer special. You know, he claims that he invented that because he put a string up there and you had to hit it through it and had to clip <laughs> the net. Do you believe it? No, I do not. <laughs> the magic number of 20 now in this opening set. Well, the Warriors need an attack presence there as well as that'll be hit into the net by Lockett. My always feeling is every time that you give that back without at least getting some type of an attack, it's like turnovers in basketball. You just keep giving it to the other team. They're probably going to score more. 
And there's yeah, the service air number four. Gives them an opportunity, certainly does. Yeah. So four service airs now on Covenant. Side out of here, Quinn Johnson. Now Quinn had a service error moments ago. And that'll be number two in a row. And these teams now exchanging service errors and with a five point lead, that certainly benefits Chatar. Tyndall in, also this will be Kate Jellen on the serve. That one would have been very close. You heard some of the players yelling out. But I guess better safe than sorry. Tipped in the air, and Chittard can't save it. Good effort on the sideline by Lexi Thatcher, but the point will go to the Warriors. 21-17, that's a point in time in the match here in this opening game where Covenant needs to put on a little bit of a rally here to get themselves in position to win this this opening match. You know, we always talk four. about getting to 20, Eric. Do you as a player have a kind of a mental thing going on when you're thinking the other team has 21? We can't make mistakes now the rest of the way. I mean, you can't make four. You can only make three. Well, that's right. But you don't. You obviously you don't want to have a mind. You want to come into a mind. You never want to have a mindset. Hey, we don't want to make mistakes. You want to. You want to. You obviously want to do not make mistakes. But you want to play your your best volleyball, whatever that may be. Yeah. Side out. Sarah server. You want to continue to serve hard. So let's see what the Trojans have in store. That'll be hit long by Lockett. And so now it's down to three. Lockett has had a couple of attack errors tonight. Two hit into the net, and then that one hit long. And this game, as we have said time and time again, is such a game of momentum. Back on the return again, Lockett to the outside. Really no attack again there by the Warriors, and the sweep again, and we saw it again by Thatcher. Now she's caught them napping on that a couple times here tonight as Thatcher. Well, they'll, I'm sure, speaking of Covenant, they'll talk about that, their next opportunity. Try to cover up that middle as you see Thatcher serving deep, and that one went up, hit the ceiling, came right back down. That'll be a point for the Trojans. And when the ball hits the ceiling like that, it's still in play. Covenant could still get that ball back over the net. Uh, but they weren't unable to do so. That came down pretty quick, by the way. It caught him a little bit off guard. And the set at the net, and it was a little bit off the mark, and now we're at set point. Well, Covenant was hanging tough for a little bit, but now the Trojans, we have a timeout on the floor. 24-18, Chittard on top. Warehousing to transportation and everything in between, Piper Logistics does it all. Centrally located, Piper Logistics has two warehouses in Indianapolis and a warehouse in Cincinnati, Ohio. Piper Logistics houses over 1 million square feet. Along with our transportation department, we can provide service to half the United States markets. Can't get to a computer? Then we've got you covered. Just go to the Indiana SRN app and stay up to date with all of your favorite teams. You can watch live coverage or relive the experience with our on-demand service. Side out again for the Trojans following the Warriors' timeout. Let's see what Covenant has in store here. They're going to get a free ball. Back to the outside once again. Good rotation there by the Trojans, but the ball was set to the net too close, and McGillicuddy couldn't get to it. So an error there, and that keeps Covenant alive here in this first set. Still at set point, as we will see now, Olivia Tucker serving. Covenant, can they make a rally here? They have, have not been able to put many points together consecutively, so this would be a new one here at the beginning, and they cannot do so. Another mistake 
for the Warriors. And so set one will go to Bishop Chittard, 25-19. This is High School Volleyball in Indian SRN. hearing your kid play the wrong notes. Where's my kid solo? At least you can see your kid. Why is my kid stuck way in the back? Hmm? The conductor only plays his favorite. Move! My kid heard that solo! You see my kid? Yeah, Come yeah. on! I'm Keith Myers, Vice President of Indiana SRN. Thanks for joining us. You know Indiana SRN broadcasts 350 games a year. All sorts of sports. Yeah, we do. Hard to believe, isn't it? Indiana SRN loves to put student athletes first on our website. If you're a business out there, we probably could help you too. Contact us at coach at indianasrn.org. Grandma from out of state thanks you. Mom and dad who can't get to the game thanks you as well. In fact, our athletes watch the games over and over again. Our military has enjoyed the games as well. So sit back. And enjoy the game. It's Indiana SRN. Tonight's broadcast brought to you in part by Serenity Home Care. Serenity Care Services is an Indiana licensed personal agency and Medicaid waiver service provider in central Indiana. They're friendly, competent, and experienced, a team of caregivers you have been looking for. For more information, contact them at serenitycareservices.net. All right, Eric Chittard got away there at the end. Covenant certainly didn't put enough consistent offensive attacks together, and I think the one key you really did say, their net presence needs to really step up here in this second set. Well, certainly it does. They need to get a, a, a better blocking presence here in this second set because really that was the difference in the, in the, in the first set was the outside hitting of Chittard, as you said, came alive a little bit towards the end of that opening set, and I think that, that powered, and, powered them to victory. By the way, if you have any statistical numbers, you can pass those along because I know you keep good, tight numbers, and I want to make sure everybody hears about them. Alexi That Thatcher with four kill, three kills rather than a service ace for Chittard. In that first set, and then we also had Madeline Munster with three kills, and then also a couple kills and a service ace for number 12, Lauren Shanks, leading the Chittard Trojans in that opening set for Covenant Christian. Three kills apiece for Danny, New Danny Newport and Evie Dart. All right, and by the way, Covenant Christian unofficially four service airs and Chittard with three in that opening set. By the way, high school football coming up again on Friday night. We have five games on the family networks on Indiana SRN. If you are, we going to pass along those games later? Do I promote that or should I? Okay, I don't remember them off the top of my head, but we have five games. You can check out IndianaSRN.org. There'll be a list of games there as well. Also on the sports page on RadioTroy.com. Side out, Thatcher. With a serve here in set number two. Nice play at the net. Boy, you just set that up perfectly and able to get the point there was Grace Feltz. Feltz with the block to start the scoring here in this second set for Chittard. And does that magnify it a little bit too, Eric, when you don't have a, a presence at the net? When you set that like that, boy, they just simply take it away from you. That's amazing. Yeah, exactly. That's what happened there. Back set to the right and the point to the outside again for McGillicuddy. So the Trojans, again, they open up two to nothing in the first set. They lead now two to nothing, and we had seen Covenant come back and take the lead in that opening set. But it's been all Chittard of late, and another big block at the net. 
It was once again Feltz, and it falls in for the point this time for the Warriors. It looked like a little miscommunication there for Chittard giving Covenant their first point of this second set. Looks like uh, their libero player is checked in here into the back row, Allie Boston for Covenant. And this is Tucker on the serve, minus one. Trojans back on the attack to the outside. Wasn't a great set. It was a little bit to the left of McGillicuddy, but she adjusted really well to get back to the ball. McGillicuddy now starting this second uh, set with a couple kills. Yeah, she was a little bit off balance. That was just well, almost look like it was outside the antenna, but she adjusted well. As you see Morris in to serve now for the Trojans. Back set and a little touch there by McGillicuddy who switched left to right. Short set and Feltz wasn't sure I think exactly what she was going to try to do with it but that ball played on the sideline and I think it might have been going out but the Warriors played it anyway. Yeah, good start here in this set for Shatar. Three point lead. Here's a replay. Yeah, it looked like it might have been out. So we will go back again. Four to one lead. The serve by the Trojans. That's one of the better hits we've seen all night by Newport. From the attack line, blocked, and the point will go to the Warriors. A little That's lift awesome. action yeah, there. Called on that. Attempted dig. DB e. Dart, who you previewed in the pregame. Good numbers across the board for Dart this year. Played with her sister Bella last year on that outstanding Covenant team. Bella graduated. And I bet they wish they had her back, huh? Good block up front again. There was Feltz. Looks like number three there, McGillicuddy as well. Into the lineup will be Madeline Lunsford inside out now for the Trojans. Take another look at it right there. That was pretty much all Feltz. Early 5 2 lead. A big attack. Ball kept alive there by Lockett, or is that going to be Morris who's still in? It's Morris. And that'll be what? Four hits, I believe, just called there on the Warriors. Four hits indeed. Could not. Dig that ball out of the net. So Took an extra hit. Biggest lead here of the set. Good rotation. Back set to the right. And that one clipped the net. Good enough for McGillicuddy to get the point. And they're setting up McGillicuddy a lot here in the second set. Three kills for her already. So this is now a five-point lead, which, again, every time they build on this, it'll be the biggest lead of the set. Well, that was another one of those that was placed right at the net by the Warriors, and they got away with it. Covenant back to the outside, and the point. I think it was Newport that time on that kill. And you're exactly right, Danny Newport. Take another look at it. But it wasn't because McGillicuddy or I think it was McGillicuddy who got a hand on it. And that'll be number five now on Covenant. And Covenant so far just in this match really hasn't been able to get on any type of run so far. They get a point here and there, but uh, they needed to string three, four in a row together. Yeah, and they did that a few times in that first set that kept them alive. Here's Riley Kramer. Nice knuckleball serve. Another one that hit the roof. As I should say ceiling. And the push and the point. If it hits the roof, we're in trouble, Harris. <laughs> 9-3 now, and we've got a timeout on the floor. Chittard on top by six. We'll be back in a moment.
we encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Indiana SRN. Hit the bell to get notifications for upcoming games and more. Watch as many games as you want, as many times as you want. A six-point lead. Bishop Chatard serving. That is Riley Kramer once again. Let's see how the Warriors will attack it this time. We've got a quick whistle, and it might be a net violation against the Warriors. And no one can see that right out of the timeout. Minigan air. And I think we'd call those unforced errors, wouldn't we? Exactly. Really like to make the other team, as that's a service error, I like to make the other team commit the errors instead of making or instead of me committing them myself. It's almost like shooting yourself in the foot. But now the Warriors down by six. This is Newport again on the serve, and they just gave it right back. That will make a coach pull their hair out when you're trying to get some momentum and you make a, a mistake again. You should have seen all the hair I had, Eric, when I was coaching. Oh, here at three in a row, we've got the trifecta. You know what's most frustrating for me, Eric? I'd bring my team to the sideline. We would drop a play and they'd go out and run something completely different. And I was always curious, did they even hear what I said in the yeah. timeout? Or? <laughs> yeah, that would definitely make you think that. What was really interesting is whatever they ran, there's a point for the Warriors. Whatever they ran, it never worked. So I'm always, why didn't you do what I told you to do? So. <laughs> but I always got to remember they're just high school kids. Take another look at this one. The replay of that last kill there for Covenant. Chatard had about three players really bunched up there together and had to do a little more spacing. Back to five. Nothing there for Lockett. And that's going to go in. So, Warriors have a little bit of life here, only down by four. Yeah, that's number 12, Kinsey Mann. A couple of kills in a row for the freshman here. Side out again for the Warriors. We mentioned a little bit ago, they haven't really strung much together, and that'll go to the Trojans, and looked like that might have been Lockett. Lockett with a quick kill there. So after a couple of straight points, you get it right back to the Trojans. Here is Quinn Johnson, who had missed her last two serves. Not this time on the outside for the Warriors. That was Newport again, I think, over there. She's too good of a hitter uh, to give her that much room here. Here it is. Actually, it might have been Dart, actually. Tell you what, either way, yeah. it was a nice hit. Good swing on the left, so the lead back to four. Short set in the middle. Not this time for Feltz. Down the line, but wide. That looked like Kenzie Mann again there for the Warriors. Well, she had those previous two kills, but couldn't keep it in play that time. Side out here for Bishop Shatar. This will be Lexi Thatcher. Lead back to five. Nice serve. Warriors will give it right back, and that's going to be wide. And another error on the Warriors. Lead to six. Thatcher continuing to serve. One of the five seniors for Shatar. Honored tonight on senior night. You know, I know you told me earlier there were five seniors as that set right in the middle perfectly. And the point again for the Warriors, that one went to number seven, Kate Jellin. But do you know how else I figured out there were five seniors? The five volleyballs that are up on the stage over there. What do you think, huh? Yeah, I think that's, pro <laughs> that's probably a good clue, yes. <laughs> hey, they don't pay me the big dollars in this broadcast for not knowing the little things. Boy, misplayed there in the middle by Lockett. There was Newport who ended up with the kill. You know, unfortunately, when you think of the least paid employees in, in this room right now, it's me because I know you drive that fancy Lexus, and I know that our producer works at Channel 40 now, and he's making tons of money, so... I wish I drove a Lexus. I drove, <laughs> drive a 10-year-old Ford Focus. <laughs> <laughs> 
14-10. And there's a block up front. And the point once again to the Warriors, and they are not going away. That was number 18, Haley Tyndall. Right side inside the line, and the point goes to Lockett. Yeah, great placement there by Lockett to go back corner on the angle for that kill. Here's a replay. Watch the per picture perfect placement here. Yeah, she was over the top of that ball. And she looks like she's more comfortable on the right than she is on the left. So I'll be curious to see if they'll play her more on that side as Morris coming in. It's a four point lead. That's are able to keep that one alive at the net. Oh, a good job there by Johnson. And then it falls in, misplayed in the other side there by Shanks. Yeah, I don't think Shanks was quite ready to, for that. It looked like an overpass over and wasn't quite ready for it. Three point there for Covenant. Chittard's lead down to three. It appeared maybe they were going to run away with it, but Warriors are hanging in there. Cross court attack, nothing. See how the Warriors will play this back to the outside, down the line, and it was touched or not? And they're going to say yes. Late call as the official was looking for help downstairs, and he got it, I believe. Number three kill for Newport here in this second set for the Warriors. So now we'll lead down to two. Boy, did everything you could to get that one back across as both teams unable to establish much of an attack. Warriors to the outside, down the line, kept alive there by Thatcher. And point, Warriors. So now it's down to one. One of the longer stretches here for Covenant Christian, putting points on the board. Trying to tie it here in the second set as the Trojans, nothing on the attack. Inside the attack line over the top, yes, by Lockett, or is that? I think it was Shanks. Shanks, yeah, number 12. Lauren Shanks stopping the run there for the Warriors. Her first kill of the second set after she had a pair of them in the first. Two point lead for Chittard. This is Grace Feltz. So they stopped the run for the second straight time. But now, see if the Trojans can get their offense going and that's misplayed by Morris. Point and side out for the Warriors. Moved Newport into the middle that time. Picked up that kill in the middle there for the Warriors. So this will be Shelby Olmstead. Now for Covenant. Minus one, second set. To the outside. Big swing in the hit. And that will be another net violation. Stepping over the line. And so it's tied at 16. Chittard let this one get away now in this second set. How will they respond? To the outside, they responded extremely well. Thank you. That was Shanks again. And remember, when the, when the match got, or the set got tight in that first set, they went to Shanks on the outside and finally got her going, and I think that gave them the momentum to pull out that first game. And they're going back to her again now on the left side here in the second set. Side out here, Riley Kramer. She'll set up more to the right. See what zone she'll attack here. And boy, you can't be doing that. That's number six now on Chittard. Substitution for the Warriors, returning number 12, Kenzie Mann. Here the public address announcer talk about Kenzie Mann coming back into the lineup. Chance here for the Warriors to take the lead. Back to the outside, and there you go again. How about that, Lawrence Shanks, big on the left. 
and we've talked about it several times, is just no block presence by Covenant. You need to get some type of block presence over there on her, at least to change her angle. Don't let her go straight up the line like that. That's like hitting a home run. You got a clean shot like that. So Shanks will serve, but boy, you just can't be giving it back. That's number seven now in Chittard. Well, neither team able to step up and get a commanding lead here late. Well, now back to the outside, and that's going to be long off the swing there by Lockett. And all of a sudden, Covenant leads it by one. Yeah, some errors now on Chittard has really aided Covenant's surge here in this second set. Short set to sweep with the right hand up front there by Lunsford. And a free ball here for Chittard. Went back outside again to lock it. And a miss hit. Kind of falling back there was Kenzie Mann, it looked like. And so Chittard ties it up, and this will go now to Quinn Johnson. I think she was trying some placement, trying to get a kill. And, and sometimes you're just better off just to bump that ball back over the net, keep yeah. it in play. Wow. Johnson struggling in the serve. That's her third. That's number eight overall for Chittard. Substitution for the Warriors. Checking back in 18, Hallie Tyndall. You hear the public address announcer talking about Tyndall coming into the lineup for Covenant, leading it by one. Warriors have not responded very well overall here in this second set. One thing you don't want to do is give Covenant any life at all to force perhaps a fourth or fifth set. And we have seen Lockett do that a lot. She didn't time her jump very well. I've got unofficially Chittard overall with 12 errors in this match. Mm -hmm. Covenant's taking advantage. 21-19, this is High School Volleyball in Indiana SRN. Bertner Electric Incorporated has been proudly serving our residential and commercial customers with quality electrical repair for over 33 years. We are fully licensed and insured in electrical wiring and electrician service packages. You'll receive a competitive assessment, whether you're a homeowner or a business owner, first time or long time customer. We offer free estimates for any new project. Call our licensed and experienced electricians today. Can't make it to the game? We've got your back. Just go to www.indianasrn.org and tune in to all of the live action or go to our on-demand service and relive your favorite moments. Well, Shatard gets the timeout as Covenant is now taking taking a two-point lead here in this second set. A win will force it to at least four. I'll be curious again, how will the Trojans respond? Need a good attack right here. Back set to the right side off the swing by Feltz. And whistle, that'll go to double hit as you see. That will go to Chittard. So I kind of talked about this in the open when I, you know, we said that Covenant went one and three in that Harrison West Lafayette Invitational the previous weekend. And they had opportunities to win all of those matches. The question is now, if you lead by one here in the second set, who's going to step up and make the big play at the right time to win this game for you? Well, let's find out. Nice play at the net. Lockett was the, one of the two players there for the Trojans. And you talk about the presence up front. There is Grace Feltz. So we're tied at 21. And I would think that eventually, if I'm Bishop Chattard and I'm winning those matches up front when it's played at the net, I'd like that to be a little more of my game right now. Short set, and the Warriors unable to get it across, and Chattard leads it by one. She put Chattard responding nicely out of that timeout to take the lead now. Serving is Lexi Thatcher. She's actually served pretty well here tonight. That's another good one. That might be the best of the night. And now it's a lead of two. Covenant, they want to talk about it. 
We'll take a timeout, 23-21, as you take a look at that ace. You want a career that will transform your life while you change the lives of others by helping them live well. With a health or exercise sciences degree from IUPUI School of Health and Human Sciences, you will gain an in-depth understanding of the healthcare industry while preparing you for a variety of graduate and professional programs in health. And with Indy as your classroom, you will have clinical options within leading hospitals right in our backyard, as well as a degree from Indiana University, reputable leaders in the healthcare industry. It all starts here. Can't get to a computer? Then we've got you covered. Just go to the Indiana SRN app and stay up to date with all of your favorite teams. You can watch live coverage or relive the experience with our on-demand service. We are back here, a two-point lead now for the Trojans, and the point will go to the Warriors. Double hit there on Chittard. But it's still a one-point lead. Well, Chittard responded relatively well there, didn't they? Yeah, they certainly did out of that timeout that they called. Now Covenant's trying to, gonna, trying to respond after they called a timeout here. So now Chittard back on the attack the other way. Warriors miscommunication on that back row and it cost him a point and now we're at set point. Yeah, Olivia Tucker with a ball handling air there in the back row and that gives set point to Chittard. You know, in such close confines, sometimes that's not, I mean, you got to make a decision very quick and sometimes communication doesn't come as quick as you would like as you see Tristan Morris on the serve. Chance here for Shatard to go up 2-0. And unable to play that one is Thatcher, and it's back to one. Still set point, though, for Shatard. So when you need a big kill, you go right to your senior, Danny Newport, leading attacker on the year for Covenant, puts it away. Thatcher, self-defense mode right there. Ball played at the net, and it falls in. Boatier with the right hand of Thatcher. Wait a minute. They're going to say no. Wow. I think that they say Thatcher reached over the net too far there. Mm. So now tied at 24. Side out Warriors. Trojans had a chance to win it. Now they will have to play a little extra volleyball here in this second set. What a big great up. Oh, boy. How about that? And then they call a double hit on Shatar, and that's going to give game point here to Covenant. Timeout by Shatar. We'll take a timeout as well. This is high school volleyball in Indiana SRN. Becoming a licensed sports official is a great way to make a positive difference in the community and support the over 160,000 Indiana student-athletes that participate across 22 IHSAA sports. Sports officiating allows you to stay connected to the game, become a role model for our young student-athletes, earn extra money, and support the patrons and communities of our IHSAA member schools. To learn more about becoming a licensed IHSAA official, log on to IHSAA.org slash officials today. We encourage you to follow us on Twitter, at IndianaSRN. Find upcoming games, video highlights, and much more. Follow us now, at IndianaSRN. Following the timeout, Covenant a chance here to pick up the win in set number two. Warriors are able to take advantage of some mistakes made by the Trojans. To the outside, and the point... Coming right back again with Grace Feltz. Pretty much when Shatard has gone to that outside left position, they have gotten a kill every time here. Yeah. Well, let me ask you, would you go there again? If you can, absolutely. If you can get a good set to the setter, I would go outside left again. So now, free volleyball in set two. Warriors 
Don't play it very well at all, but they do get the return. And then Chatard. No communication near sideline. McGillicuddy and Thatcher. So some mistakes made by both teams, and we're at set point here now for Covenant. Well, if you're Covenant, you'd love to have a service ace right here. There and it there it is. And so Covenant comes back to win the second set, 27-25. Take a look at this one. Shelby Ohm stead with that ace. Boy, but where's the communication back there for the Trojans? We'll take a timeout. This is High School Volleyball in Indiana SRN. A career that creates experiences that are impossible to forget. By studying sports and events at IUPUI, you'll get hands-on experience in and out of the classroom. And with Indy as your classroom, there are high-profile events, sports franchises, hotels, museums, and large organizations across the city to engage, educate, and enlighten your student journey before you graduate. There isn't a better city than Indianapolis to get the experience you need to prepare you to handle any event, big or small. It all starts here. From warehousing to transportation and everything in between, Piper Logistics does it all. Centrally located, Piper Logistics has two warehouses in Indianapolis and a warehouse in Cincinnati, Ohio. Piper Logistics houses over 1 million square feet. Along with our transportation department, we can provide service to half the United States markets. This is the Frells family's land. When the sun comes out, the kids run and play right there. This used to be a shed. Now, it's where they get breakfast. This is more than just land. It's home. The Frells family runs with us on a John Deere 1 Series tractor. This land isn't the only thing that should live on for generations. Nothing runs like a deer. Search John Deere 1 Series for more. Visit Reynolds Farm Equipment, your hometown John Deere dealer today, at ReynoldsFarmEquipment.com. Needing to hire someone to take care of your loved one when you're away? Maybe your family member just needs someone to talk to when you're not around. Why not contact Indiana Licensed Serenity Care Services? Call Angela, owner of Serenity Care Services, at 317-900-6202. Our team of trained and experienced personal care providers are licensed to serve seniors requiring companion care and light housekeeping services in Indianapolis and its five surrounding counties. Call us today at 317-900-6202. Now hiring qualified. Tonight's game brought to you in part by Tam's Sweet and Savory Cafe. A great atmosphere for breakfast or brunch. They're open Wednesday through Sunday, 8 a.m. until 2 p.m. Tammy and her staff waiting to serve you and your family. Try their biscuits and gravy or the quiche. You can also get the BLT, which Coach Myers recommends. But they've run out of mayonnaise, by the way, so don't ask. Tam's located at 6427 Oakland and Road in Indianapolis. And, Eric, I'll tell you what, Shatard did not play well down the stretch in that second set. No, they didn't. And the, the amazing thing about it, Troy, was they had a set point. Yeah. They were. They had to serve in a set point, and suddenly they stopped communicating after that. Yeah. And that gave Covenant a little life and an opening, and they took advantage. Yeah. And we just talked about that. The one thing you can't do is let a team have more life. Mm -hmm. And that uh, plays to fruition in this one because Covenant picks up the win. And so now we're at least guaranteed four. So now Covenant will serve. Here is Kay Jellen on the serve now for the Warriors. It doesn't really matter, at least at the first two sets, who gets off to a fast start because the other team has been able to come back more than once. And there was another miscommunication nearly on that back row by Chatard. Inside the attack line. Johnson to keep it alive and down the line and it'll be Point Warriors. It was out on the swing by Lockett. As we mentioned earlier, Covenant looking for that first conference win. I think that the way the players were looking around, they were hoping it got tipped. Lockett over the top, no. 
And a block of the net, so Lockett comes right back, gets the point. Nice block in the middle there by Lockett. Side out, Bishop Chittard, here is Thatcher. Good serve by Thatcher. Ball tipped by Feltz at the net, and from the outside, McGillicuddy. Well, they've had success, as you said, on the left side. But McGillicuddy coming to the right side, able to get the point there for the Trojans. Down the line, misplayed. That was Danny Newport. And now 3-1. Side out again for the Trojans. You see Thatcher Went to that deep the middle one more time. And here's a freebie here for the Trojans. Will they capitalize? And that'll be wide off the swing on the outside by Lockett. Couple attack errors by Lockett here to start this third set for Shatar. But Shatar is still hanging on to a one point lead. You know, there are so many times when I watch some of these teams play that. I'm just curious about the mistakes that are made. I know the coaches really preach a lot about cutting down on mistakes, but, boy, when you play really good teams, you're not going to have a chance to come back as, as often as you are here tonight. Point will go to the Trojans. Belts with the kill. Myra Lockett. See that last play. Now that's the net presence you talked about moments ago. And there it is again. That ball, that's been happening a lot tonight for Covenant. Place that ball right back at the net, and Trojans make you pay for it. Yeah, Feltz is coming alive there in the middle of the block. That time it was more of an overpass there put down by Shanks, actually. Warriors make the return. There is Johnson from that attack line locket. 5-2 lead, Trojans trying to come back after a disappointing finish in that second set. There's the block up front, and there's Feltz again. Yeah, second block for her now in this set. Now, remind you again that Chittard had a lead in the second set, let it get away. So nothing is automatic despite having an early 4-2 lead, or should say 6-2 lead and four points, and another point there by the Trojans. They're just blocking everything now. Feltz with three blocks, came in this contest leading the Trojans in blocks on the year with 18. Well, you do, as you said, they've got the advantage, and that one just barely hit the line. Certainly play to your strengths in this one the rest of the way. Just a step inside the attack line. This time, the Warriors able to play better at the net. That one hits off the, the ceiling again and came right straight down. We've seen that happen about three times. Yeah, that's happened several times tonight for Covenant. Big lead right now for Chittard here, 8-2. Plus six, we'll be back in a moment. Back here at Bishop Chittard High School, 8-2 here in set three. So Chittard has played much better at the beginning of this third set than the way they finished out set two. And there is the ninth service error on Chittard. Despite, despite that ace, I think Coach Heather Lyon has got to be impressed with the resilience of her team, resiliency of her team to come back after what was a, a second game they probably should have won, actually. Yeah. I was going to just about to say that if there's an Achilles heel for this Chittard team, other than the just putting a team away, as you see McGillicuddy in the outside, which they really, as you said, should have put Covenant away in that second set, it is serving. They just sometimes do not serve very well, and, and their numbers prove it at 86%. So I'm sure that's something that they have worked on 
quite a bit. That push deep and the point. Deep push kill there for Newport. Her first kill of the set here. Side out now for Olmstead and Covenant minus five here in the third set. See, and that is something that I just saw right there as not a good return at all is you saw two players there from Bishop Chittard come together. So who is control on that back row it, it, when you think it'd be the libero? Yeah, you would think so because uh, that's what she's in there for is to right. be a backcourt specialist. Yeah. So wouldn't she communicate, say, I got this, like a center fielder in baseball, call everybody else off? Uh, really, I wouldn't think she'd have to call anybody off. They should know, they sh they should know that's her ball. <laughs> well, they let that open middle, and Quinn Johnson unable to get to it. Point will go to the Warriors. And you've been playing on both sides as you take another look at it. You've been playing on both sides. I think that was Ainsley Gross yep, there. It was her second kill. That you should, in all the matches you've played already, you should know that at this stage. So again, a five-point lead. Warriors back the other way. Quick sweep once again by Thatcher. And there's another misplay again at the net by the Warriors. So that's been kind of their Achilles heel tonight. Just too many balls that were set close to the net like that. And then on the other side, we mentioned Bishop Chittard and the serving. Yep, ball handling errors for Covenant have been an issue. Plus six on the serve once again for the Trojans. They'll have to give it back. Sweep deep with the left hand and misplayed again, receiving air. That's another dig air there by Covenant. Good, good effort there by Thatcher to tip that ball back deep. And Covenant misplayed it. Lead at seven. Trojans trying to now take a 2-1 lead. And the Warriors able to come back, get a point from behind the attack line. That might have been Newport it again. It was. I think that's the first time they've actually set her in the back row. She's got to stay, take off behind that six-foot line. It's a back row hitter. Did so effectively. Here's the kill. Took off well behind it. And she knew she couldn't come up much further. You know, the ball was placed about perfectly. Back to the outside, and that'll be wide. Looks like Ali Armour is in now. Number 25 there for Bishop Chittard. Side out Warriors. Short set middle and the battle won. Eva Dart, I believe, up front. Yeah, rare block for her tonight. We talked about her in our open leading blocker on the year for Covenant to need to establish a block here tonight. They haven't really done that, but she did so nicely there. So now the lead down to four. This one starting to look like the movie we saw in the second set late, but then the Warriors misplay it up front. Another ball handling error there at an inopportune time. Chittard takes a five-point lead back. Lunsford side out, Bishop Chittard lead to five. You know, one thing that we really haven't seen much tonight is that's going to be tipped I believe point Warriors is we haven't seen anybody really dominant I mean they'll come up and we've seen Bishop Chittard get a lead but I don't know that they've ever felt comfortable no matter what lead they've had and here's the the tip on that attack and then it turns out to be a kill for Evie Dart no and I think part of it has been some lax of lapses in concentration by Chittard which has contributed to that little runner and Chittard able to get the point and a five-point lead. That was Allie Armour, I believe, right? Yeah, it was. Her first kill of the match. So Thatcher will serve. She's actually done pretty well in the serving department tonight. That one on a line drive, and that'll be long on the return. So now the lead at six. 
Will Chittard close this one out? They were very strong in the close in set one, but didn't look like the same team in the second set. Outside left, the swing and the point. There's Armour again. Yeah, Armour's come on, come in off the bench here in this set and is giving them some great pr production. Two back-to-back -back kills for her. And there's another service error. That's number 10 tonight on Bishop Chittard. And those kind of mistakes right there will just keep another team in the game. As Olivia Tucker back to serve for the Warriors. That was not handled well, but able to get the point. And armor again. Boy, armor switching from left to right. And armor will come out. Morris coming in. And Morris will serve. She's from behind the attack line. Lead back to seven. The mascot giving out free candy, by the way. And that will go to the Warriors. Back to six. Sir. Outside left, and that's going to be long. And the point again to the Warriors. A rare attack air there by Shanks. She's, when she's got an opportunity on the left side tonight, more often than not, she's putting, she has put it away. So now it's down to five. Nothing easy so far for the Trojans. And that's going to be long. Smart play there by Quinn Johnson to let it go. You have to have kind of that sense of knowing where that line is, where you are. and yeah, She's a libero player, so she certainly uh, would be, uh, you would think would be very well versed in that. Feltz plus six here for the Trojans. To the outside point, yes. That'll be Lauren Shanks. Third kill for her in this game. I'm not so sure, and I'm not a volleyball coach, but that side, that left side has been good to them tonight. I'm not so sure I wouldn't just keep going there and going there until you stop it. I'm going to keep doing it. Well, that's a that big kill. time hit. That well, it was Newport who put that straight down on that kill, and that's exactly right. Volleyball can be a game of strengths like that, mm -hmm. much like football. If you got a great offensive line and a running back, just keep you know feeding the running back. You got a, an outside hitter who can't be stopped. Just yeah. keep going to him until they stop him. Of course, that time I'm not sure, so sure anything would have worked yeah. the way that ball was hit. Warriors at the net again, and nobody there to receive it. Newport was the closest. And that's a huge mistake there for the Warriors, and now they're down by seven, so the race to five. That time of communication there caught the Warriors out there, cost them a point. So here is Riley Kramer. Warriors give it right back, so here's a freebie now for the Trojans. Went back to the outside left, and that's going to be long. Just a little bit too much on that one for the Warriors, and now we're at eight. There's the air just missing the back line. You know, the one thing I liked about the official on the floor that time, she made the call immediately. We had a couple last night where they didn't make that call very quick, and generally leads to problems. To the outside, but the Warriors will get it. Was touched by the Trojans. Lead back to seven. Newport off the block that time with the kill for the Warriors. Danny Newport, get a good look at Newport. They're going to need a strong rally right here. It's a little bit different situation than what they had in the second set. Good block up front. Looked like McGillicuddy, and that's going to be long again, and the Trojans will get it back. 
And we're down to three. Warriors were asking for a touch. It wasn't called. Eight point lead for Chittard. We've got a timeout on the floor. As Chittard leads it 22 to 14. I'm Keith Myers, Vice President of Indiana SRN. Thanks for joining us. Do you know Indiana SRN broadcasts 350 games a year? All sorts of sports? Yeah, we do. Hard to believe, isn't it? Indiana SRN loves to put student athletes first on our website. If you're a business out there, we probably could help you too. Contact us at coach at indianasrn.org. Grandma from out of state thanks you. Mom and dad who can't get to the game thanks you as well. In fact, our athletes watch the games over and over again. Our military has enjoyed the games as well. So sit back and enjoy the game. It's Indiana SRN. Back once again here at Bishop Chatard. Eight point lead now for the Trojans here in the third set. They managed to get the win. They'll go up two to one. And another great serve. And that kind of handcuff there, the player for Covenant. Yeah, aces have not been a strength tonight for Shatar, but there was a nice serve there by Shanks. Yeah, take a look at this. That's kind of a knuckleball. I think she was kind of caught. Here's another one. I think the player for Covenant was kind of caught between should I go for it or not, and that indecision cost her. Take another look at this one. Wow, nice. right between them. Yep, yeah, nice perfect jump serve there by Shanks. Here she comes again. Yep, set point. Plus 10 here now for the Trojans. Boy, they look, looked a whole lot better down the stretch in this set than they did in the second set. Now they got a free one right here. Will they capitalize short set? The push, no. And misplayed at the other side by the Warriors and Chittard will take the third set, 25-14. This is high school volleyball on Indiana SRN. You want a career that fuels your passion for sports and physical activity. IUPUI School of Health and Human Sciences offers that and more. You'll have insider access to sports, fitness, and exercise science professionals and learn from faculty with years of industry experience. And with Indy as your classroom, you'll study next to world-class sports facilities, Olympic governing bodies, the NCAA, and the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. There isn't a better city than Indianapolis to get the experience you need to launch your sports industry career. It all starts here. Can't get to a computer? Then we've got you covered. Just go to the Indiana SRN app and stay up to date with all of your favorite teams. You can watch live coverage or relive the experience with our on-demand service. Hey conductor, how about something new? You played this last year. Come on, get your head out of your sacks. Shh, we're trying to hear. Well, I'm sick and tired of hearing your kid play the wrong notes. Where's my kid solo? At least you can see your kid. Why is my kid stuck way in the back? Hmm? The conductor only plays his favorite. Move! My kid heard that solo! You see my kid? Yeah, yeah. Come on! They say nice guys don't finish first. So maybe it's time to reconsider what it means to be first. <laughs> by being your best but knowing you could be even better it's being present while respectful of history you sure you want to make that move it's donating something more valuable than money it's believing in yourself and something bigger it's coming from different families we're treating each other like brothers it's not just being a man it's being a mason Hey, tonight's match brought to you in part by Pat Cherry Insurance. Their staff will provide you over 40 years of trusted expertise and knowledge to help protect your assets. If you need information, you can give them a call at 317-894-7000. You can also email her at pat at cherryinsuranceagency.com. All right. Shatard took care of business in that third set they didn't allow covenant to come back 
Same game plan in the fourth set right now. I would imagine that's what Coach Lyon told to him during that last timeout between sets here is what's come out inspired in the fourth like we did in the third and not let up again. Yeah, no doubt about it. We'll find out. As we said earlier, it didn't really matter who got off to a good start. The other teams have been able to come back and make some runs, but again, Chatard really took command. And like you said earlier, Eric, it, I really liked the way the Trojans played at the net that time, and they went to the outside left. And, and when they got Feltz going or whoever they had over there, they really, really played well. Yeah, and then they, they really took the middle away from Covenant in that third game as well with a block presence in the middle. It was yeah. outstanding. And by the way, give credit also to Sarah McGillicuddy. She came in, and by the way, Allie Armour also came in, gave him a spark, as you alluded to, off the bench. So let's see what happens here as you see both teams on the floor. They'll make the final adjustments. The official will give them the green light here in a moment. We'll be ready to go. Must win game here for Covenant. And that, again, we use that word pressure a lot, but that does put a little bit more, magnifies your mistakes a little bit more when you have to get a win now. So we mentioned this Covenant Christian team won't get much easier. They play Ben Davis tomorrow, so they're not going to have a whole lot of time, win, lose, or draw tonight to think much about it. They'll just have to get back to work and ready to go. No practice time at all. Thatcher will serve for Bishop Chittard, and we are underway here in the fourth set. Short in the middle, and the point Warriors. Boy, they attacked that well. Yeah, beautiful serve reception, great pass to the setter, and put away nicely by Evie Dart. That might be the quickest point they've had all night long. Side out, Warriors. Just to give you a little bit of background, as that's returned, played at the net, and the Warriors keep it alive. Most of the volleyball games that I have done this year, that's misplayed there by Lockett, have gone five sets. And I'm sure Eric's glad to hear that. He's got to get up. <laughs> He's Our producer likes that, too, that you guys got to get up and go to work in the morning. But I just want to prepare you mentally. That's going to be long. 2-1 Covenant. You know, I, I'm not sure that our producer is 23 years old, and he gave me kind of a disrespectful look right there. I think you should respect your elders. I'm old enough to be your grandfather. Side out here for Morris. I'm not as old as Keith, but I'm close. So Covenant again, a good start here in the fourth set. And that's a big time swing and a kill again. Newport with a kill and I guarantee you Covenant would love to see this thing go five sets. So an early three to one lead. Warriors after that not so good finish to that third set, I would imagine their head coach had a a couple of things to say to kind of wake him up a little bit. And will it be kept alive? Yes, nope, hit into the net by Johnson and Covenant leads it by three. A great adjustment there by Newport on the attack for Covenant. Not a great set to her, but she adjusted so she could go across court, kind of a tight angle to the net and Bishop Star wasn't able to recover. So plus three, Johnson a little tip there by Feltz. Back set to the right on the swing by McGillicuddy. Defended well back to the left, and it goes out of play. But I'll tell you what, that time it looked like the Warriors had more of a presence at the net than they've had most of the night. Yeah, but still putting the ball away there on the kill was Shank. She's been tough on the left side. 4-2 Covenant. Warriors nearly made that mistake again as here's a freebie once again for the Trojans and hit into the net by Lauren Shanks. We have seen that numerous times tonight. Chatard unable to just get the return. Let me ask you this. Is it that mentality, live for another day? 
if you can't get it back over the net, just give it back to them, and, and then let's set up our defense. Yeah, absolutely. If you're not comfortable that you can get a, a good solid hit on it, just, just bump it back over the net. There's a big kill there. Yeah, that's Lunsford. So we will see Kramer come back in, and we'll be serving now for the Trojans. Down by two. There have been 10 service aces, or I should say service errors tonight on Chittard. Six by Covenant. That was pushed down the line. Would have been really close. Back to the outside left, and the point, Warriors. Side out, Covenant Christian. So now they're up by three. This is Newport again serving for Covenant Christian. Got the last kill. I've got her with 13 unofficially in the match. Good serve handled by Johnson. And here come the Warriors back the other way. And Johnson unable to play that one. It would have been close either way. But now Covenant leads it by four. Here's another look at it. There's the kill there. That was uh, Kenzie Mann. Kenzie, the outside hitter there for the Warriors. But again, a four-point lead right free back. Ball. Yep, here's a freebie. Short set middle, but unable to produce. Point will go to the Trojans. Uh, hitting error there by Ain Ainsley Gross of Covenant. They had a great opportunity there to get a point off that free ball from Chitar, they just could not take advantage. So here is Lauren Shanks. Good serve by uh, Shanks. Jump serve has been very effective tonight for Shanks. Now, if my memory is correct, she's the one that finished things out in the third set, right? On she, the serve. She did, yes. Yeah. See, there's not much that gets by me when it comes to remembering. Oh, well, we just jinxed her. 11 now on Chittard. Side out again for Covenant. Sweep with the right hand point, good. Great execution there by Thatcher. That ball was passed too tight to the net. She knew she wasn't going to be able to set up a hitter. Just tipped it right over the net. Covenant wasn't ready. Side out here for Lunsford. Lead is down to two. Boy, and the Warriors don't handle that one well again. Yeah, they've had some lapses and some ball handling errors that have really cost them at inopportune times here tonight. And certainly I think that a lot of times we see that that's really the difference between either good or average, right? I mean, if you cut down some of those mistakes and at least make the play, as you see now, the 11th service error on Chittard. It just might be the difference between what they have, the success they've had, what, a couple of years ago or even last year and compared to this year. Well, they're still leading it by two. There's that quick push again by Thatcher, but Warriors able to play it. Outside left, Armour, no. Went to the left again, no success, two in a row against the Warriors. Playing better at the net, returned there by Armour. Johnson decides to play that one, but I think Thatcher stepped over the line and she did. Lengthy rally there, goes Covenant's way. Now they don't always call that, you might step on the line, but if it's blatant, they'll get you, right? You just step on a little bit, they're not going to get you, are they? Uh, you just got to cross it. There's another nice play for the Warriors. That, yeah, I tell you, you can't even hardly see that line, Eric. Yeah, look at true. it. It's, it'll be hard to see. So now the lead at four. How about the Warriors coming back? And another 
Misplay by Bishop Chittard, and they're down by five. I feel a five-setter coming. Surprise, Coach Lyon hasn't taken a timeout here to try and take away some of this momentum from Covenant. Yeah, they've been uh, kind of holding on to those timeouts lately. Slide to the right, cross court, no for Feltz, and it goes out of play, though. The point will go to Bishop Chittard. McGillicuddy, who played well in that third set back in, and there is Thatcher. So will Chittard be able to answer the call? No, not on that one. That's 13 now. We mentioned against Cathedral, we did that game. And they really didn't serve well at all. Only 86%. And Cathedral, that big front line that they have is that's pushed wide. So now a six point lead. And the thing is against like, you look at seven players taller or they're 5'10 or taller for Cathedral. You can't yeah. make mistakes because they really made you pay for it. To the outside, and they'll get the point. That's number three, McGillicuddy again. That inconsistency's been a problem for both teams here tonight. And whoever plays the most consistent from here on out is probably going to win the match. I agree. You're exactly right. Who's going to cut down on the mistakes? Here's Morris. That one a good serve to the outside. Ball set to the back, and it will be what? They're going to give that to the Trojans. Points going to go to, or to excuse me, Sitar. Some of the players for Covenant kind of looking around. What was their what was their question here? Now that looked like it was wide, unless it was touched. There is number 14. Isn't it kind of like hitting the free throw, Eric? I mean, you practice, you practice, you practice, and I think you miss some, but. Yeah, except that sometimes the coaches ask you to move the serve around a little bit, not just serve it right up the middle of the floor. So you think that if I were asked to serve it down the line, that's tougher than serving it down the middle? Could be. Of course, you can move around back there on the service line. Then I think they should. But there was another mistake by the Trojans. They're down by six now. And now they got a free one here. See if they can do something with it. Nice play at the net. Warriors give it back. Longest volley we've had in a while. Look at all the players bunched up there for the Trojans. But they do rotate back and get in position. This volley might wear you out. Inside the attack line. Good play at the net again for Covenant. And then you misplay it right there by Shanks. And the Trojans need a timeout. Covenant trying to force it into game five. They say nice guys don't finish first. So maybe it's time to reconsider what it means to be first. It's about being your best, but knowing you could be even better. It's being present, but respectful of history. You sure you want to make that move? It's donating something more valuable than money. It's believing in yourself and something bigger. It's coming from different families, but treating each other like brothers. It's not just being a man, it's being a Mason. We encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Indiana SRN. Hit the bell to get notifications for upcoming games and more. Watch as many games as you want, as many times as you want. 
Well, the timeout Covenant has now opened up a five-point lead here in the fourth set. Jotar got the timeout. I was going to ask you, what do you think they talked about? Uh, cutting down on the airs, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> Most obvious, right? <laughs> and there's another big point the other way for Covenant. Covenant rolling right now. Well, I gotta, you've really got to give Covenant credit after the way they finished that third set to come back as strong as they have as that's going to be wide down the line. And now you're only seven away from the fifth set. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, Covenant didn't show a lot of energy after that third set, and they've come out and played great volleyball here in the fourth set. Well, now plus seven is their biggest lead here in this fourth set. By the way, my middle name is Troy, the fifth set, Darren Gowski. So I just want to warn you, if you want to get out of the next broadcast with me, Eric. <laughs> and this one won by the Trojans. Yeah, there's the joust at the net there. Nice win there off that joust by Feltz, and she'll go back to serve. Take another look at it. Strong play there by Feltz. Down by six now. Good swing in the middle. They'll give it right back. Trojans back to the outside left, and they'll get the point. There is Shanks. Two kills for her now in this game. Here is another look at it. Two steps in front of that attack line. Had good momentum toward the ball. Does Chittard have enough here to come back and win this one? And get a good run here, but boy, that wasn't enough lift again. That time for Lunsford. Tried to make that little run at it and just didn't get it up high enough off the net. A couple times now where they should have been rather routine situations where they could get the ball back over the net. They haven't been able to do so. Warriors get it back and now Lead it 20 to 13. Now remember that when we go back and look at this matchup here and you go back to that second set when Chittard had a chance to win the set and go up two to nothing, but they could not do so and the point will again go to Covenant. Off the block that time for Newport on the kill. So now the race is down to four here to force a fifth set. And they have not, by the way, speaking of Covenant, had a service error in a while. That's number seven. Well, you have to, I don't think they've had one in this set. You have to go back to the third set. And here is Riley Kramer. But oh boy, they're going to need a really strong finish here to get back into this one. Back set to the right, but it was too far wide, and the point will go to the Trojans. Well, they had Newport over there. That's why she went with the back set to try and set her up on the right side, but I'm not sure the back set was the right idea right there. So now down to six. And we just haven't seen either team put together seven, eight, nine points in a row, and they won't do it here either. Point Covenant. There, that time, Jelen did execute the back set to Newport over there, and Newport put it away. Here's Newport. That's one area where Covenant has not had problems up until recently, and that's now two they've had here in the set, eight overall. So here is Shanks. See Armour come back in. She had some solid moments in that third set, but then they're going to set her back down. So down by six. And wait a minute. Like maybe uh, someone was out of rotation on ah. Chittard. Yeah, they Lost started to make the change, and then they didn't. 
Was that part of it? Yeah, it, it had to been, yep. So now Armour comes in, but they give up the point. I'm not sure if she stepped out on the floor or not. It didn't look like she did. So now the Warriors only two away. Middle set point, yes, and we are now to set point in a nine-point lead. Evie Dart with that kill in the middle. Looks like we get a timeout. Yep, 24-15, Covenant on top. From warehousing to transportation and everything in between, Piper Logistics does it all. Centrally located, Piper Logistics has two warehouses in Indianapolis and a warehouse in Cincinnati, Ohio. Piper Logistics houses over 1 million square feet. Along with our transportation department, we can provide service to half the United States markets. Can't get to a computer? Then we've got you covered. Just go to the Indiana SRN app and stay up to date with all of your favorite teams. You can watch live coverage or relive the experience with our on-demand service. There you see the Warriors' nine-point lead chance to win this set. What a turnaround when you think about what Tard was able to do in that third set. Covenant just didn't look good at all, and now it's night and day. It sure is. It has been, Troy. And, uh, you know, Covenant's really, and you talked about it, they've kind of really played mistake-free volleyball here in this, in this game, and, and that's got them out to a nine-point lead and a set point here. Well, a long conversation. This seems to be a little bit of a longer timeout than we normally have. They're usually in and out. Sometimes by the time we get back, they've already made the serve, but they're going to talk about it just a little bit longer. Of course, maybe the one key, too, is that if it was a substitution, whether it was a rotation violation, whatever it was on Chittard, and Covenant got it right back, and scored another point. So again, to force this one to a possible fifth set. Well, Covenant, as we talked about in the open, they've got a couple players that certainly know how to win. Newport and, and Evie Dart, they were major contributors last year on a 25 and seven team. And those yeah. two have stepped up here in this, in this fourth game and trying to get this to, it looks like it probably is going to go to a fifth set here. Well, that was a really long time out, Eric. I'm trying to figure out what we missed. <laughs> if we would have asked for a two-minute timeout there, they would have come back in 30. When we want them to come back in 30, they have a two-minute timeout. You know, the balance of the world a lot of times depends on how this works out. So that's for all of you that are 23 and younger. All right. So here we go. That's the philosophy of the Book of Troy, in case you're missing that. Nine-point lead for Covenant. I would not have guessed this after Chittard won by 11 in the last set. They're going to get a free ball pretty much here, too, but not timing the jump very well side out here for Chittard. Yeah, I think Dart was trying to trick him there. A little off speed, just clear it right over the net. Thought she had a winner, but then missed time to jump. But again, the Trojans behind the eight ball. Here's Thatcher. You cannot make a mistake the rest of the way. And that's really tough to do. And there's the point, and that's going to do it. Covenant comes back and gets the Santa. Am I right about that, or did they give that to Chittard? Also, let me see if I got this straight. So that last set was actually won by Covenant, 25-16. We missed something there? That was the reason for the long time. <laughs> ah, so now we're in the fifth set now. Well, I must have been in Space Alley because I missed that totally. 
And nice play there by the Warriors. Able to keep it alive, and the point will go to Bishop Chittard, leading it 2-1. to one. I'm going to have to go back and look at the film because I have no clue. We must have been somewhere. Well, well it was, what was funny was is that the Covenant players didn't even really celebrate like they had won the game. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but we thought it was a timeout. Yeah. It was actually a point, yeah. but boy, forgive us. I've been in the twilight zone before, but boy, I was way out there that time. So we're tied at two. The good news is we didn't miss any action. And now we've got an explanation for the long timeout. Warriors come back to the outside. Newport with a big kill there. We're playing to 15 here in this 15. So now 3-2. It's a good thing this is a free broadcast because if it were pay-per-view, some of them will want their money back. Down the line, point, yes, for Chittard. Shanks with the kill there for Chittard. We might go right to the last points here in this set. It's what we would consider to be sudden death in some ways because you got to find a way to win this one, and it's down to 15. Back the other way. Back set to the right. Cross-court attack, and it found an open hole. That's McGillicuddy. Well, I would imagine a lot of people looked at this tonight and thought, well, there's no way that Covenant Christian would force this into five. They had not won a conference game coming in. But as you said earlier, they did play very well in that tournament, had a chance to win all their games. And there's another big hit from the left side. And I believe that was Shanks again. Yeah, it was. They're going really to what's been effective for them all night long here in this pivotal fifth set. That's Shanks up that left side. She had to kind of reach back to get that one. So five to three here in the fifth set. Outside again, and they'll get another one. And again, go to what has gotten you there. Three kills now for Shanks here in this fifth game. We, now we get a timeout. Now we are for sure in a timeout. Six three, Shatard on top. encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Indiana SRN. Hit the bell to get notifications for upcoming games and more. Watch as many games as you want, as many times as you want. Following the timeout, the Trojans now a three-point lead. As they try to come back and after that disappointing fourth set, We'll try to win it, but that one pushed right into the net by McGillicuddy. And that's what I've talked yeah, about that's before. It's one you got to get over. Yeah, the net just there. return it. And then you get your rotation set up. And this stage of the season, you ought to be getting those back over the net. Yep. So now the lead at two, and there's a service error the other way. But it did not hurt Chatar because the service error there by so Covenant gives him the serve right back. Nine now for Covenant. Side out, get a good look there at Riley Kramer. So now in terms of thinking about this one, you need to get eight more. Play consistent volleyball here, back set right, cross court, nothing there for Lunsford, and then down the line, there's a point the other way by Newport again. 
Now one of the players coming over to talk to the head linesman and I'm not sure what the discussion is. Big time kill there by Newport. She's got uh, six kills in these last two games. So seven five. So that was Thatcher coming over to say something to the head official, but she apparently got the explanation she was looking for. So Warriors minus two play at the net. And eventually returned once again by Chatard. Energy's picked up a little bit here in the fifth set as well. And that is again to the outside. Looks like Shank. Yep, Shanks again. Fourth kill for her in this fifth game. And if you're Covenant, you want to stay within a couple points here in this fifth game. You do not want Shatard to get more than a couple points ahead here. Boy, Shanks did a great job getting over the top of that ball. She's been instrumental in the serve that has caused some issues tonight for the Warriors. Right hand, nothing there for Thatcher. And the return to the net. Nice play, but then you have three Warriors all coming together and a huge mistake yeah. there by Covenant. Yeah, at the worst time when you were down eight to five, now you're down nine to five here in the uh, fifth set after that miscommunication. Another nice serve by Shanks from behind the attack line. Outside, Lockett able to make the return. Here come the Warriors back the other way. And the ball played at the net in the middle. That's Lunsford. Blocked there by Lunsford. So now you're five away from the win here tonight. But boy, they're going to earn it. That's been a huge, huge play tonight at the net as there's number 15 on Chittard. They're really going to have to cut that down. Side out, Covenant. Well, gave it right back. Alley Boston libero player coming on just to serve and play the back row. Not what you want out of a libero player there, service air. Side out, Lunsford and Bishop Chittard. Hard fought contest both ways and a receiving air there and the ace by Lunsford. And the air is now really hurting Covenant Christian here in this fifth and final set. We could probably take a look at some of the games on Friday night if you want to because we have several games. High school football, believe it or not, we're already thinking about week five and there is one, Columbus North and Chatard. I will have that broadcast. Heritage Christian will be at Sassina. That'll be a good one. And then Evansville Memorial and Evansville Harrison. Also Friday night, Mount Vernon Delta. I know you'll be up there to see that one. Mount Vernon trying to get back on track. And then, of course, we'll have Tinley and Covenant Christian. And don't forget Saturday. Yes. A trip to Defiance, one of the hot spots in Ohio as Kalamazoo will play Defiance. Saturday, 1.30 is the kickoff time pregame at 1.15. Defiance, Ohio, one of the vacation spots that you should all go to. So now chance here for the Trojans. But the Warriors come back, big strike on the left. Is that Olmstead? I think that might have been Newport again. Okay, so Newport comes up big. This will be side out now for Jellen. To the outside, big swing and a kill once again for Lockett from the left. And they've got a ton of points on the left side. Indeed they have, and now they're closing in, just two points away from winning this match. So here is Thatcher. See how the Warriors will respond here. Back set right, over the top, no. 
the other way, and that's going to be long, and the Trojans thought it was touched. And the libero player in the back row for Covenant definitely tried to play it. I don't think she touched it, but she was definitely trying to play it. So now you see the floor judge coming over, one of the linesmen coming over as well. Covenant didn't do, the rest of Boston's teammates did not do a very good job of communicating and calling that ball out. She definitely went for it, but I did not think she touched it. Do we have a replay on that, Nick? Nope. You know, if we were at Channel 40, we'd have a replay, wouldn't we? If you were there? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so Nick's got an attitude for us now. I tell you what, you get late at night. It's past your bedtime, Nick. Is that what? <laughs> well, after the lengthy conference call, they say indeed it was out, not touched. Okay. So it will be Warriors side out here for Olivia Tucker. Absolutely got to get this serve in here. That's a short set to the middle. Nicely played as the Warriors able to make the return. Another short set blocked up front. And wait a minute. It's going to go. It's, they're going to say it's wide. Yeah, Evie Dark made the attempt at the block but could not keep it in play. It was close, though. It was. The Warriors were celebrating. and oh, it, looked, it looked like it was very close to painting that line. Wow. Can we see that again, Nick? Yeah, looked like it was maybe a little bit wide. So we are at match point here. Here is Morris, and guess what? That is number 16 tonight for Chittard. But we're still at match point. And the Covenant's got a veteran player back here serving an Evie Dart. Let's see if she can start a run for him. Yeah, it feels a little bit better when you only have to go to 15 instead of 25. And that'll end it from the outside. That was McGillicuddy. And ending it tonight for Chittard. But they were taking the distance in this one. Here is the winner. Great Just a set. step Great. inside, Beautiful huh? set by Thatcher there. So your final score is 25-19, 25-27, 25-14, 16-25, and then Chittard wins it 15-9. So we have seen tonight some good volleyball. We saw some not-so-good volleyball in some areas where both teams know if they're going to get very far in the tournament, they've got to shore up some a couple of areas. Absolutely. I think both teams have to work on consistency here going forward in the season, but Chittard came alive in that fifth and final set, primarily from the outside hitter position there on that left side, which had been their strength all match long, and that's what got it done again in the fifth set. All right. Hey, thanks for being with us again. Chittard wins it 3-2. to two. Don't forget, high school football coming up on Friday night. Check out IndianaSRN.com. Joel, thank you. Out there at Bishop Chittard did a fantastic job in the camera work. Thanks to Nick, our producer, Eric, our color analyst here tonight. I'm Troy Derogowski. Thanks for being with us. We'll see you next time right here on Indiana SRN.